There's two types of IP addresses you would expect to see when you're looking at the configuration of your workstation or the configuration of your router. And the two types of addresses are IP version 4 and IP version 6. You'll see those abbreviated as IPv4 and IPv6. An IPv4 address is one that we're probably most familiar with. It is a series of four different octets, four different bytes. And we commonly see it written in decimal as 192.168.1.131. But of course, each one of these octets refers to a section of binary as well. And if you refer back to our binary math video, you'll know exactly how to create these different conversions between the decimal and the binary. As I mentioned also, each of these 8-bit combinations we often call a byte, but you will also see it called an octet. So IPv4, when we put all of these different numbers together, the total amount is 32 bits or 4 bytes. And you'll notice, because they are separated into these 8-bit chunks, the largest decimal value that you could possibly have for any one of these would be the number 255. And you'll notice whenever we talk about subnet mask, a subnet mask of all ones, for instance, for one of these might be 255.255.255.0, which means you have all ones and all zeros. Makes it very easy to calculate that in binary. IPv6, though, is a little bit different. Let's look at that protocol. As you can see already, IPv6, very different looking than IPv4. The first thing you'll notice is it's very big. It's a nice long address. It's 128 bits long. So that's a big difference than the 32 bits for IPv4. We wanted these addresses to be much bigger because we didn't want to have shortages. We didn't want to run out of IPv6 addresses. And IPv6 was specifically designed to, to accomplish that. That was a major, major engineering effort to have that a total of 16 bytes long. So of course, it is going to be much longer to write on the screen. Another thing you'll notice is the grouping of these groups the different sections into these 16-bit chunks. Of course, that also means they're two bytes or two octets in size. And because of that, you'll notice we write these not in decimal, but we write them in hexadecimal, a base 16 to be able to view these. So ultimately, you might see this type of address that is an IPv6 address. It's also nice that it is very different than IPv4 because it should be very easy for you to differentiate between an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. You'll notice some of these IPv6 addresses have a lot of zeros in them. And anytime you see a zero, or, or at least two groups of zeros together, you can abbreviate two or more of those with a double colon in here. So you can see that we abbreviated this one quite a bit. So we put these shortcuts in here to be able to make them a little bit smaller. And another thing that you can do is also get rid of any leading zeros. If anything starts with a zero, you can simply drop it. So you can see this particular set of two bytes, the 0652, can be abbreviated to 652 in its little section. Obviously, these addresses are not things that are easy to remember. So your IPv6 domain name services is going to be very useful because we will tend to call things by their name a lot more using IPv6 because we simply can't write down or remember all of these very, very long addresses. So obviously, one of the first things we can do is get rid of our leading zeros. So we do have some leading zeros. This is all zeros. But obviously, we can make that and remove leading zeros here. We'll leave just a single zero in its place. Uh, let's see, these are not leading zeros. These are trailing zeros. So those have to stay exactly where they are. Here are two leading zeros. And finally, a single leading zero here. So if we were going to remove all of those, it would look something like that. FE800, 0, 0, 0, 0, CABC, C800. We've gotten rid of the zeros in front of the A7. And we've gotten rid of the zero in front of the 8D5. Our next step then is to find places where we might be able to group some of these zeros together and replace them with a double colon. So any place there are two or more zeros, we can collapse those down. An important thing to remember is you can only do this once in an address. If there are different situations where you might have two zeros on this side and two zeros, sections of zeros on the other side, you can only pick one of those to abbreviate. So if we were to, in this particular case, choose these three zeros all together and abbreviate them, we would simply put in a double colon and leave everything else 
results exactly the same. So at the end, what we have is this same address that we had, this long address up here, is abbreviated now to something that is at least a little more reasonable. Hopefully now you'll be able to look at an IPv4 address and an IPv6 address understand the differences, and in some cases, even abbreviate or make smaller those IPv6 addresses.